Hi there folks, I'm Paul from Sound Devices and I'd like to show you some really cool things about our new version 2.10 firmware for the 970 and PIX rack mount recorders. Version 2.10 is all about bigger and faster metadata for streamlining production workflows. Think of it as metadata with go faster stripes. So let's take a closer look. So the first new feature I want to show you is the metadata edit screen. I'm going to be demonstrating this using a PIX260i, but it's exactly the same on a 970 and PIX270i. So to access the metadata edit screen, press audio and menu together, or control plus M on a USB keyboard. So here you can see that we can edit scene taken notes for the previous, current and next takes. And we can do this during record, after record or before record. Navigation is really easy. Um, you can either use the encoder or rewind and rewind and fast forward buttons or you can use the arrows on a keyboard. Now if we scroll below the notes field you can see that I bring up a list of pre-configured phrases which makes it really easy to enter long streams of notes into the relevance notes field very quickly. You can configure your phrase list simply by going to the file storage menu and navigating down to the phrase list manager which I think is number 14 yes and in here you can add new phrases okay so going back to the metadata edit screen we can also scroll up to the column headers next current and previous and if we enter those fields, it will bring up a shortcut effectively to the file details view where you can view things like sample rate, number of tracks, bit depth, time code. But you can also edit your track names from here. OK, now all of this metadata edit screen functionality is also available from PixNet. So let me just demonstrate that to you. To access uh, the metadata edit screen from PixNet, you simply click on the arrow at the side of this metadata box here and it will expand out the previous, current and next take scene taken note fields for you to access and enter metadata very quickly. The only thing that's lacking from here is the phrase list manager, but we anticipate that will be added in a future update. So another really neat feature of version 2.10 is the ability to create CSV sound reports and create them and store them in the real folders that your audio files reside in. Now, to create a sound report, all you have to do is use the shortcut audio plus files, or you can use a control plus P shortcut on a USB keyboard. Now, to customize the header of your sound report, again, go to File Storage Manager and scroll down to Menu 15. And here you can enter things like project, producer name, director name, job number, etc, etc. And these form the header of your sound report. When you create a sound report, by default, using those shortcuts, the sound report is created on all connected drives and it's stored within the real folder that your audio files reside. If you simply want to create a sound report on one particular drive, you can do that from the files menu and just scroll to the particular drive you want to work with. Select a real folder and hold the encoder in and then you have this create short uh, sound report command. So while in the file storage menu I'd like to introduce you to a couple of other features, really cool features. This particular one I'm going to show is a new file name format, uh, real scene take track name. This is an ideal file name format for any production where the, the cast is really large, like reality shows. And what it does, it allows you to add the track name. The track name is automatically added to the end of each file. This is only applicable, obviously, to monophonic mode. Um, so this is a really useful tool for post-production to identify which file, which cast member is in which file. We've also added a daily folder option, which can be set up in the real format menu. So we just come in here and can select daily. And now your real folders will always update with the current date which makes a great organization in a, a long form project. 
Version 2.10 also introduces date-based user bits, which are accessible from the timecode sync menu. Just scroll down to user bits format and select one of the date formats. And it can be in month, day, year, or day, month, year format. And finally, we've also added a new menu in the system menu called initial view. And this allows you to choose how you'd like the machine to boot up, whether it should boot up with the audio expanded view or the input settings view, or if you have a PIX270i or 260i, whether it should boot up in video view. So I hope that's given you an idea of what version 2.10 is all about. If you'd like to find out more about what's under the hood, please visit our webpage sounddevices.com and go to the firmware download pages to find out more. Thank you for listening.